it seems China hasn't only been out to get our royal family, they've been targeting senior, senior British politicians as part of a cyber-backed attack, which has spurred a crisis meeting in Westminster today. That's right. Three MPs and one peer, all harsh critics of uh, Beijing, have been summoned to an urgent briefing by Parliament's Director of Security, whilst Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden is expected to address Parliament later today. Well, let's bring in the, Tobias Elwood, the Tory MP, who's the former chairman of the Defence Select Committee. Tobias, good morning to you. Can you explain um, if the Chinese, as we understand on our front pages, access personal details of 40 million British voters, how does that impact our democracy? Because I just rather assumed they know all about us anyway. Well, that is a, perhaps, if dare say, a flippant comment to make about China, who's actually harvesting data to understand who we are uh, what our uh, views are and try and nudge our nation to have debates and to have disagreements, to sow political discord. That's what their operations are all about. It's now common modus operandi for countries, not just China, but Russia, Iran and so forth, that uh, spend an awful lot of money trying to distract governments such as the UK, uh, who are critical of those countries. And that's the case with those MPs that you mentioned. They seek to exploit our our openness, our transparency, our freedoms of expression. And you were talking about that just earlier, to raise tensions, to raise disagreements and conspiracies here in the UK. And I'm pleased that the uh, Deputy Prime Minister is going to finally hold China to account and to challenge this, because otherwise these behaviours become normalised. And it's worth... First thing, it's not just the UK that's being targeted in this way, but many countries across the West. Uh, so we do need to establish not just a resilience to be able to defend ourselves and protect ourselves and call this out, but also what are the international standards for us to be able to operate, given that the digital sphere is now becoming to dominate every aspect of our lives? Um I'm a bit baffled, Tobias, I can't lie. So just, we just work out, just explain to us the danger, though, because... We, there are two issues here, aren't there? There is the surveillance and the security services, whereby every country is watching every other country. We can sit here naively and pretend we don't do it, but we're doing it as well. And China are doing that at us. But I think what you're talking about are the, the bot farms, the industrial scale manipulation of the narrative along social media lines. But that just takes really firm political leadership in this country, doesn't it? And we just have to ignore a lot of it. Well, we simply can't ignore it because you're absolutely right about those bot farms. And the introduction of artificial intelligence and quantum computing is allowing countries such as China to do this on a scale that we've never imagined before. And if you can then see how they can influence social media by agreeing and liking uh, certain conspiracy theories or agreeing and liking certain smears about, let's say, parliamentarians and so forth, that could affect the outcomes of elections and so on. And that's why it's then important that we absolutely have a robust capability. The UK National Security Act that was introduced last year looks at hostile activity from foreign states or indeed those acting in those countries as well. What are the espionage offences that we can then uh, point in that direction? But there is a bigger picture, as you say, that we need to agree on what the international norms are. And we're really nowhere close to that simply because... These countries operate in isolation, but with access to our internet, with access to all uh, in, in, in order to harvest that data itself. But it's, it's also more blunt. I did a visit to Taiwan last year. I, I praised the democracy that I saw there. I then got a letter from the Chinese embassy saying no good comes to those who interfere in other states' affairs. Now, I had to take that letter to the Speaker of the House and I'm pleased that he then approached the uh, Chinese embassy to say, you cannot speak to parliamentarians. You cannot threaten parliamentarians in this way. But this has now become the norm from China, I'm afraid, to threaten us because we're critical about what China is doing and where China wants to take the world. But what's the solution? Because it sounds a little bit like you're nudging towards a world in which we have our freedom of expression compromised so as to somehow... Um, avoid the, the, the nefarious intent of China, but what you're going to do by doing that is become more Chinese and shut down the British population. No, what we're <laughs> seeing today is China being called out for it. There's been a hesitance, and I think we've discussed this on your programme in the past, of not knowing where China is going to go. What are their long-term intentions? They are seeking to exploit perhaps the timidity of our uh, global order. They want uh, their own interpretation. They're linking up with other nations as well. They're tying in other countries 
in their one belt road, one boat road programs. So we're ending up getting a splintering of our world, as you imply, in fact, into two spheres of competing influence, the West and indeed then the China, Russia, Iran axis. And then much of the rest of the world, the global south, for example, watching to see which way is this, this is going to play out. And we need to be much more robust in well, standing but, but, up to Tobias, China. What we're going to do, we're going to, put, we're going to put some sanctions on these Chinese politicians. They don't care. They well, couldn't care less. The, the, <laughs> we've entered a, a new Cold War, let's call it as it is, with China. And that's happening with trade and so forth. But as I say, these blocks that are competing with each other. The big difference between the last Cold War and this one is that China re requires access to the international community for trade. And if we're a bit more robust about trading on terms that meet international standards, then they will then conform to the global order that we all agree with. If we don't do anything about it, then absolutely, as you imply, they'll continue exploiting it and we'll continue to get hit by cyber attacks.